Are you serious? Are you serious? The Russians had a plane intercepted by Japan protecting us? What? Somebody tell me that, uh, uh, get a cup of coffee and everybody just try to calm down and let's see if we can understand it. Don't spill your coffee. Are you serious? Here's what's going on. I want to thank James McKay for both of these articles I'm going to talk to you about. First of all, Japanese jets intercepted a Russian bombers on the heels of suspected practice runs against the United States military bases. That's exactly right. Russian strategic nuclear bombers were taking part in a large-scale military exercise and flew some practice strike missions in the Western Pacific on Monday. So just this past Monday. I and mean, you haven't heard about it, have you? No, it's because Anderson Cooper is not going to tell you about it. Um, but uh, as they were flying these nuclear bombers, eh, let's take a practice run. Let's fly it over the United States as military bases. As they were doing this, they were intercepted by Japanese fighters, according to the Japanese and Russian military officials. Both are confirming it now. The bomber flights were the latest case of strategic saber-rattling by Moscow, followed and followed what U.S. defense officials said earlier this year were practice bombing runs against the United States and Japanese military bases in the region. Japan's joint chaff, uh, excuse me, Japan's joint staff said Monday that three Japanese fighters were scrambled to intercept the TU-95 Bear H bombers that were de detected flying north near the Korean Peninsula and Japan's northern islands. A third Russian aircraft, uh, an Il-20, flew over the disputed Kuril Islands, controlled by Russia, but claimed by Japan. The bombers flew over the Sea of Japan for a total of 7 hours and 15 minutes, according to the military in a statement carried by Koyodo uh, News Agency out of Japan. The bomber flight was part of one of Russia's largest military exercises, which is currently underway. Now, this is huge news because our media doesn't tell us anything about it. Think about it. Russia's flexing the muscles. I mean, Russia's Vladimir Putin is saying, uh, no, I'm not going to give you Edward Snowden. No, Obama, no. Matter of fact, no. I expect to see you here for my summit in September. No, I'm not giving you Edward Snowden. No. And instead, while he's saying no to America... He's flying nuclear bombing practice run missions in the Southwest Pacific over American and Japanese military bases? What? And we got to get the Japanese to stick up for us? What? Okay, now hang on now. Let me tell you some more about... I, 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 this is insane. Okay, now Putin, another article... Again, from James McKay, Putin says war games show Russia's military power. Uh, President Vladimir Putin said Wednesday that Russia can be proud of its military, which has shown a high degree of combat readiness during the nation's biggest war games in more than two decades. Are we going back into the Cold War? Sounds awful hot to me. Today, we can be proud of our army, said Vladimir Putin, the maneuvers which began Friday and continued through this week involved 160,000 Russian troops. Now, we knew about this 160,000 Russian troops. We've been hearing a lot in, lately, like Russia's going to be putting troops, 15,000 troops were in the Washington, D.C. area. There's, there's information leaking now that uh, America's going to let Russia start managing our security at the Super Bowl, the, the NCAA Final Four, uh, the Kentucky Derby, the Boston Marathon. Wasn't it guys, weren't these guys Chechen Russians that blew up the bomb? What? 
Anyway, I'm just asking. Uh, the maneuvers which began Friday, last Friday, which would have been uh, July the 12th, and continued all through this week, have involved 160,000 troops, Russian troops, and about 5,000 tanks and other armored vehicles across Siberia and far eastern regions in a massive show of the nation's resurgent military might. The exercise also involves 70 Pacific Fleet ships, 130 aircraft, including the TU-95 strategic bombers that were flying over top our hair uh, in the South Pacific. Now, Putin, who watched the maneuvers Wednesday at a firing range. you got to love this guy. What a president this dude is. I mean, this guy's out here, I'm running military operations and I'm on a firing range right now. You know? A lot of presidents today, instead of being out on the firing range or showing military might, they're getting their nails done at some spa or something. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, nobody get... Nobody can take that. <laughs> don't take offense. I mean, you know, I don't know if even President Obama can even fire a, a rifle. I'm not even sure if he can. I'm, I'm... We know he didn't serve in the military. Okay, now let me go in here. Matter of fact, we, we know he even protest against it in his younger days, back in his college college days. Um, now, let me just say, um, but we... Russia says the exercise was part of a regular combat training and wasn't di directed against any particular nation, uh, though some analysts believe the show of force was aimed at China and Japan. But we're taking it personal. We're taking it personal. You're flying over our bases! Moscow and Beijing, China forged what they describe as a strategic partnership after the 1991 Soviet collapse following decades of the Cold War. Now remember, Vladimir Putin's an old KGB agent, and I think once a KGB, KGB agent, always a KGB agent. I just don't think there's a whole lot of change there. Um, it's going to be interesting. You know, Obama's supposed to go and, and uh, have a meeting with Vladimir Putin in September, and I've heard rumors that Obama might cancel, might not go, because... Putin won't turn over Edward Snowden to him. Wow. Let's see how that shakes out in the next few weeks. Will Putin maybe arrest Snowden and get him out of his hair so that Obama shows up? Or does, or does Putin say, eh, then stay home if you want to? I mean, we just don't know. Let's keep an eye on this. Uh, it's getting pretty frosty between those two. It never was very warm. So we'll continue to watch what's going on. But I just want to break in and let you know that uh, there's some tensions. You think you got tensions between North and South Korea? We got some tensions now between America and Russia. You say, oh, Paul, you're overblowing it. Really? Go to Syria with me. Take a look at Damascus. Literally is becoming a ruinous heap. Russia is backing Assad. America is backing the Muslim Brotherhood. A proxy war is being fought right before your very eyes. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Pray for the President of the United States. He needs a lot of prayer. Pray for the, the world situations. Pray for the Russian people, wonderful people. Pray for the Americans. We, t we have a lot of wonderful people as well. And we need to pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't need to be shooting each other, but that the gospel of Jesus Christ leads people to the Lord, that they come to Jesus and give their life to the Lord and be born again. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. I'll be right back with more information.